Okay, all my fixtures have been installed. You can't see the one behind the uh, garage door, obviously. One there, one there, another one there, and another one by the door. Okay, I'm ready to begin installing the gang box for the switches. As I said, this is going to be a double gang box, and here's all my wires that are going to come in. You may notice that the studs are a little bit different, and that's because I had to install 1x2 uh, spacers on all the studs because of this drain pipe here. You'll notice on the right hand side, this drain pipe previously caused the drywall to crack and bow right here because it sticks out about three quarters of an inch. You can see after I install those spacers, there's barely any room here. So we're good now and the drywall is going to be nice and flat when I install it and this drainage pipe won't cause me any more issues but that's the reason I had to install these spacers. Now, because I had to install those spacers this game box won't work anymore. Let me move the camera back up. So this game box won't work anymore because these nails tend to fall directly in between the spacer and the stud. So when I hammer it in, all it does is separate the, the two and it doesn't hold the box very well. So I'm not gonna be able to use this. Instead, I found this metal gang box. There you go, it's got a bracket on the side. Now this one, the holes are spaced a little bit differently so that I think I will be able to just uh, install it directly into the stud without any issues. That's the only reason I, I changed my design a little bit. But that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to install this box. Okay, so I'm ready to begin installing my junction box. I have all my cable connectors in. And now I'm just going to take my metal rule here. And what I'm looking for is 5 8 inch spacing between between the, uh, the stud and my junction box edge. Okay, so my box is uh, installed on stud. I'm ready to begin installing my wires. Uh, this is the line that's uh, coming from the main. It's, it's 10 gauge though, so it's really hard to, uh, to bend. So I'm just gonna route it into the, into the nearest hole. And once again, this wire, I'm just gonna cap it off and, and stuff it in the back of the box. It's not gonna have any actual purpose, but I just need to run it into any, any box just so that I can, uh, just so that I can cap it basically. You can't just snip a wire midway in the wall and call it good. That's not going to work. So we've got all of our uh, wires running into the box. Now we just need to staple them all and route them nicely. Okay, so next I'm just going to trim the wires. Okay, so I finished roughing in all the wires. You can see in the back here, this is the line that I'm terminating in this game box. Uh, basically, I just put some uh, twist connectors on each line, taped them up nice, and they're just going to stay stuffed in the back like that. Um, everything else, I trimmed the wires nice. I have one additional one here in the back because I decided, you know, while I'm already doing this, why not just go ahead and install another outlet? So there's going to be one additional line here and that's going to run to that outlet right there and essentially we're ready to start laying insulation down in the drywall at this point i'm going to basically stuff all these wires into the back and what we're going to have to do is uh put the drywall down and then cut an outline along the outside of each one of these boxes uh, so that the drywall fits against the wall nicely and yeah that's that's about it that's where we're at there's also one additional outlet down here. Here's an overview of the entire wall prior to installing the drywall. 
All right, so I'm done installing the insulation in the drywall. Here's what we're looking at. And I'm going to finish installing the electrical outlets right now because I need light to work uh, once it gets dark out and for the painting. I haven't done any of the mudding, any of the taping, or the painting yet, obviously. Okay, first thing we're going to do is take all the wires out. There were a lot of wires coming into this one, so it's uh, pretty packed. When you're doing this, you also want to ins inspect the insulation, the insulation to make sure nothing got damaged while you were cutting the holes for your uh, junction box in the drywall. Ready to begin wiring our switches in. I've got my two switches here. Uh, first thing is make sure you don't install them upside down. Off switches go down, on you flip them up. So this is how we're going to install them just like this. Brass screws on the right hand side. Now the way, we're, the way I have this wired, um, this is the main coming in. This is uh, one half of my lights, this is the other half. This is my grounding wire from my metal box. And then this is the wire going down to my lower outlet below this uh, light switch. So what we need to do here is basically just combine all the whites, combine all the grounds, and then I'll show you how to wire the, uh, the hot leads to the switches. That's pretty much all we need to do. Okay, first things first, get all these black wires out of the way, and we're going to do our grounding wires. So go ahead and separate those out, get them all kind of equal length, and in this particular receptacle we're going to have five grounding wires, so it's going to be a little bit of a nuisance to get these together. But we'll manage. Make sure they're all about the same distance. And because these are five wires here, we're going to have to use a pretty big uh, wire nut. So I'm going to go ahead and use the blue one. So now we just need to go ahead and tuck this all the way in the back. Get it out of the way a little bit. Alright, we're back. So I had just attached the wire nut for all the neutrals and I just realized that I forgot something. Namely that the switches also have grounding screws so they also need separate wires. So what I'm going to do, not wanting to take this big old roll apart that I did previously, is I'm going to use the ground for the wires that are coming in and capped off. Uh, that's another main that's coming in from the, uh, the main panel. And I'm just going to attach it to this ground. Uh, with a few scrap wires. So all the grounds should be going straight to earth anyway, so it shouldn't matter that I'm using a different uh, line in than uh, the one that I'm actually going to be powering this with. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just attach this with some wire nuts and then I'm going to stuff this neutral in the back and begin attaching my hot leads. Okay, so those are the wires for our grounding screws of our terminals, or I'm sorry, our switches. And we're going to go ahead and attach those now. Okay, there we go, switch number one.
All right, good. Those are now out of the way. Now we can go ahead and beginning attaching our hot leads. I've got this one coming in, which is going to the outlet below the switch, below the switches. And then these two right here, the shorter ones, are going to the two sections of lights. This is my hot lead, or this is coming from my main uh, breaker, for my sub panel actually. And I need to daisy chain this one between both of these switches, and then at the very end also pigtail it to this one. So that, I'm sorry, this one, because my outlets need to be powered as well. So this is one of my lights. And then this is also one of my lights. So I'm just gonna strip those two. So I'm gonna attach this one to the top hot screw. So my lines are connected to each one of my light sections. Now the only thing I left to do is uh, basically attach all four of these. One, two, three, four. Here, 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 and then to my outlet. And basically just uh, pigtail all those sections. And now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this around. Let's see. So I could have simplified this wiring by simply uh, stripping a section of this main main wire in and then running it from one outlet to the next and then just uh, stripping the end and attaching it to my outlet wire. But I stripped a little bit too long of a section in the middle and that didn't work. I didn't want uh, any of my hot lead exposed. I want as little wire exposed as possible. So that's probably about ideal right there. So basically we just need to uh, wire up all of these wires together and we're done. And there we go. Our switches should be functional now. Just gonna go ahead and wrap a little tape around everything just to make sure we're all right. All right. We should be good to go. I can start attaching these now. Oh, this is gonna be a pain in the ass to get in. Okay, I just restored all the power. We should be good to go. Here we go. Zone one. Woohoo! And zone two. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. Works pretty well. And they turn on pretty much instantly, so that's good too. Awesome.